Adding humor as you're talking with people can be a risky business, but it can also add interest and sparkle to your conversations. People like, listen to, and trust more to those who make them laugh. A study conducted by Jeffrey Hall, who is a researcher from the University of Kansas, observed two different men having conversations with people out in public, and afterwards he interviewed the people about how they felt about these two men. The first man, who was considered extremely smart, had a poor performance in trying to be funny, and the second man actually had an average intelligence, and demonstrated he had a great ability to make people laugh in his conversations. Surprisingly, at the end, he discovered that many of the people that that talked with these two guys all perceived that the second man, who was funnier, came off as more intelligent than the first man. This could really be a problem in many life situations, such as if you're trying to talk with a girl and they start to feel that you have a poor sense of humor. Isn't that right, Jake? Absolutely, Chris. Humor is perhaps one of the most important ways to attract girls, which is what my YouTube channel, Inner Game, specializes in. A really good reason for this is, for example, when a girl laughs, she releases massive amounts of dopamine in her brain. Dopamine is known as the feel-good hormone, and interestingly enough, women release more dopamine than men do. So, being funny is a huge important step in building a stronger relationship between you and the girl you're talking with. That is awesome. Coming up by the end of this video, you will have learned three new styles of humor that you can use effectively so you can be the next star of your future conversations. Let's get started. Making people laugh really comes down to your understanding how the sense of humor works. You see, the sense of humor is essentially how you connect different things together in an unexpected surprising way. But after learning that, the only difference you really need to know is how to adjust your style of humor to different kinds of people and situations that requires different types of humor. So Jake, what's a great start for beginners to help them get started? The first type of humor I recommend for beginners to start with is called misdirection humor. Misdirection is mainly based off the audience's assumption and you'll realize it's quite simple to use. The idea behind this humor is setting up an expectation of whatever you're talking about that's going one way and then saying something that goes the other way. It can be as easy as setting expectations in the first couple words or you tell a story and then flip it into something unexpected. Doing this makes you look like you have great situational awareness and you have the ability to come up with a clever or comical observation. It also makes you look like you're able to think on your feet which shows others that you're charming and you have the ability to win people's affection and interest. So first, before you end your talk with something that the other person expects you to say, you should ask yourself, what does my audience expect me to say right now? Once you've figured it out in that moment what they think you'll say, it's simple from here on out. You just need to say the exact opposite. Essentially, this is called the punchline because it's based on revealing that what we expected to happen did not. In fact, something completely different happened, and the less we expect what actually happened, the funnier it becomes. Here's a great example of misdirection. I heard an old wise man once say, never follow anyone else's path, unless you're in the woods and you're lost and you see a path. Then, by all means, follow the path. You probably expected to hear more about why you shouldn't follow someone's path. Then, when the punchline came in, it might have surprised you enough that it actually resulted in a laugh. That's basically misdirection. I definitely recommend trying it out. The next type of humor you can use is called self-enhancing humor. This humor involves the ability to laugh at yourself, such as making a joke when something bad has happened to you. It's also trying to find the humor in everyday situations and making yourself the target of the humor in a good natured way. Here's an example that I personally did that you can do. Whenever you make a mistake in public, you can simply make a joke about it and laugh it off. Not only your embarrassment will lessen, but it also will help you come off as more fun to be with. Say that you slept on your butt at a party, you can just get up, dust your pants, and joke. No rips, no holes, nothing to see here people, carry on. In this situation, it's similar to misdirection humor because people anticipated you to say sorry about that or something along those lines, but instead you misdirected them with something surprisingly positive for yourself. 
almost a hundred percent of the time you'll find other people laughing with you and not at you. And finally, we have affiliative humor. This is a way of amusing others to facilitate relationships and this is a powerful style to use when you meet people for the first time. This is because it is positive and inclusive. This can work very well in the workplace. It also works well in any sort of team building activities and you could actually use it at a dance party. Remember, to make other people laugh, you need to be relaxed or else your audience will not feel relaxed enough to laugh with you. Here are some examples that use affiliative humor that you can use for starting conversations. Excuse me, but I do think it's time we meet. This will put a smile on most people's faces without sounding too intimidating. Or you could say, what kind of old person do you want to be? This really intrigues people. Everyone hopes to get old and so they will have an opinion. Also, it will make people smile because you are talking about old age as something positive. This is an unusual mm -hmm. twist on an everyday topic which will make people interested. The third thing you could say is, what present would you buy me if you won the lottery tomorrow? Of course, if you just met the person, this is funny because they probably wouldn't buy you a present. The fourth thing you could say is, if you worked at a circus, which job would you want to have? This is a good one because it will test their sense of humor and lightheartedness. Here's a few tips that we recommend that you should know about as well. Number one, try to work the joke into the context of the conversation. Number two, don't ask if you want to hear a joke. Let it be a surprise. Number three, have a strategy to fall back on if they don't get the joke. For example, I like to use, I guess you had to be there. Number four, breathe. Take a breath and pause before and after the punchline. Number five, smile and wait for the joke to sink in. Really, don't be the first one to laugh. And that's pretty much how you can start using humor effectively into your future conversations. I hope you found value in this video and I want to say special thanks to Jake from the Inner Game channel. Thank you so much, Chris. It was a huge privilege being here, and I am so grateful for the opportunity. Click on the card above or in the link in the description to visit his channel. You'll find so much value in many of his videos about attraction psychology, which I found them to be so interesting. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe along turning on that bell notification for more upcoming contents coming up very soon. So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.